Have you ever wondered why, when you breathe, your rib cage moves out to the side? I always did. My name's Nima Nair. I'm a massage therapist and anatomy geek at the Himalayan Institute's Pure Rejuve Wellness Center. And I'm here to talk to you about the mechanics of breathing, which is fascinating. Like, I'm really amazed by this information. So, so here we go. There's three things we're going to talk about when we look at the mechanics of breathing. We're going to talk about the abdomen, specifically the pressure in the abdomen. We're going to talk about the chest cavity and the pressure of the chest cavity. And then we're going to talk about the diaphragm itself. So we'll start with the diaphragm. The diaphragm is an umbrella-shaped muscle that goes from the rib cage all the way up to about rib five here. And it goes all the way around. So it's a three-dimensional, you'll see a picture up on the screen, uh, muscle. On the top of the muscle are, if you look down from above, there's two uh, it's called the central tendon. It kind of has two parts like this. And this is made of a tendinous fascial layer that's rubbery and not very flexible, meant to be stable. And then attached to those two things is our muscles called the crua, which attach to the upper part of the lower back. But, and, and most people, when you hear about breathing, you understand that these crua contract and it brings the central tendon down and that creates a suction and the air comes in and you breathe. But what a lot of people don't talk about is the muscles on the side, which are really important too. So these muscles are directly attached to the inside of the lower ribs, and they are, it's vertical. So they, when they contract, they'll pull the ribs up. You see, like that. But if the diaphragm didn't descend, they wouldn't be able to, to, to expand the ribs. The ribs would go inward. So here's the diaphragm, and this is what happens. The crua brings the, the central tendon down, and these contract, lifting the ribs. And you know when muscles contract, they actually take up more space. Like, here's my bicep. I don't have much of one. But when I contract it, it, it takes up space in the body. So when these muscles contract, they take up space in the body, and your rib cage goes to the side. Voila, right? Cool. But there's more to the story. So the belly is like a balloon. So as the diaphragm, a balloon meaning it compresses, but it, does, but it doesn't change volume. So as you compress it, it moves out to the side and squishes flat. So you have the diaphragm squishing down the belly, which is compressing, and then pressing back up into the diaphragm. That also supports the ribs moving out to the side. And then you have the pleura, the, the, the chest cavity. So as the diaphragm descends, there's a suction that happens. And, and, and you have to understand something about the lungs. The lungs are like, the anatomists call it um, negative pressure in the lung cavities, which means that there's less pressure here than the air outside. So air moves into it readily. So as you breathe, your diaphragm descends, and that negative pressure increases, and then the air starts coming in. And then toward the end of the breath, that negative pressure, especially at the bottom of the rib cage, starts to match the pressure of the abdomen. So it gets squishy, and at the end of the breath, you can actually feel the lung pressure, the pleural pressure, pushing down on the rib cage. And that also supports the sideways action of the rib cage. Cool, huh? I mean, it's just like so complex and so beautiful, but that's what happens. Okay, so what? So what is interesting is that, one, in any position that you breathe in, the ribs are always moving. And, but they move at different rates. So if you're lying on, on the floor, like in Shavasana, just relaxing, what happens is the stomach doesn't really resist the diaphragm. It actually gets out of the way. And it rises up, and it gets out of the way, and the, and the diaphragm just keeps going down. <laughs> it's not resisted by the belly. This is what happens. And so in that case, 
the rib action is less because it doesn't have to. There's plenty of room for this descending diaphragmatic pressure to fill the lungs just fine. When you put a sandbag on your belly, which is what happens when we do breath training, we, we want to strengthen the diaphragm so that we put a sandbag on our belly so it creates like a barbell for your diaphragm. When you do that, not only is the belly contained, but the back is also contained because it's, it's against the floor, and your diaphragm has very little place to go. So it has to push against that sandbag, which makes it stronger, but the rib cage moves out to the side even more. Now, if you're doing this at home and you want to try it, you have to understand that you can make your belly go up and down without moving your ribs at all, and you can make your ribs go out to the side without having the diaphragm descend too much, because all of that's under conscious control. So when you do these experiments, you have to kind of leave that part aside and just try and watch what happens when you naturally breathe. And then you'll see those differences. When you're in crocodile pose, your belly is sequestered by the floor, but the and the back rises, but you have the spine, you have a really tough fascia on the lower back. It's not going to move nearly as much as the belly. So again, the rib action comes into play fairly strongly. And then when you stand or sit, if you're sitting correctly and, and your core is activated, that core activation is also going to compress on the diaphragm, give it some resistance, and you'll have a lot of rib movement. So what happens when you slump? So what happens when you slump is this. The, the muscles of the crua, those little legs that pull the diaphragm down, are on a slack. So when they contract, they can't really bring the diaphragm down. They're kind of inactive. They, they're, you know, I get a little bit of rib movement, but mostly what I get is a shallow breath. So good posture is really important to great breathing. That's all I have to say about that. I hope you enjoy this and um, have a wonderful and breathtaking day. <laughs>